Thank you again for joining me for another day text for Thursday, February 21st. My name is Greg Stafford and we host these day text videos Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, unless otherwise scheduled. So always take a look at the uh, pending items, but usually we meet every weekday so that we can consider a portion of the biblical record or other related histories, sources of wisdom and knowledge that we can benefit from and use in our lives today. All right, so we're working our way through the letter to the Hebrews and we are in chapter 11. And I'm gonna go ahead and start by reading verses 30 through 35. Occasionally I may break, make a few comments but I will for sure at the end of the texts make an application, see if we have any questions, and then we'll be on our way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start by reading uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 30 through 35. We're talking about those um, people in the past who demonstrated faith. And so the author of Hebrews is giving a list of examples of people who acted out of faith. Faith is belief based on the best available reasons. Faith is not ever something absent good reasons, and they should be the best available reasons. Faith is based on evidence. Even if you can't fully see it, even if you don't know it, like going out any time of the day and driving in a car, you don't know if you're going to die, but you have good enough reasons to believe you will survive, so you do it. Well, people in the past and people today are acting in the same way out of faith according to the reasons that we have that determine for us whether what we believe is more, most likely true and whether we can act on it as if it's true, even risking our lives. Okay, so we're reading examples of people who acted out of faith in that way. And we're going to pick that up here in verse 30. All right, Hebrews 11:30. We'll read verses 30 through 35. It says, With faith the walls of Jericho collapsed after being encircled for seven days, verse 31, with faith. After she accepted the spies in peace, Rahab the prostitute did not suffer death along with those who refused to listen. Verse 32, what more should I say? Indeed, for me, the time will run out as I recite the history about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and about Samuel, and the rest of the prophets. Verse 33, through faith, these people defeated kingdoms. They helped establish righteousness. They received promises. They closed the mouths of lions. They held back the power of fire. They, they escaped sword blades. They were made strong because of weakness. They became strong in battle. They routed the enemies of foreign lands. Verse 35, women received their dead out of a resurrection, but others experienced tortures instead of the opportunity for release so that they might experience a better resurrection. Okay, let's jump back and look at a few things here. I put a link in the description, um, an article that I thought was well done in terms of the history associated with the walls of Jericho. Back in the 19th century, uh, Kathleen Kenyon and others excavated the site where Jericho is located, but they misdated the events that they uh, determined based on their findings. And so it took several more excavations before they could actually realize, you know, what was what had happened and when it had happened. And they have found piles of collapsed brick all around the city. Okay, just like the Bible describes. It also, the Bible, describes how the Israelites uh, set fire to the city. And all through the city of Jericho, you find a layer of burnt ash. Further, the Bible describes how the spies came to Rahab, the prostitute. We read about it here briefly uh, because she helped them to escape. But it says in the Bible that her house was located within the walls of Jericho. So people have thought, well, how could, how could she have lived in the walls? You know, she didn't die when the other people died, when the walls collapsed. Well, of course, they could have told her just not to be in the walls. But the fact is they have found homes right up against the wall, an eight-foot section of a wall um, on one side of Jericho, 
which is considered like a slum district based on its location and the fact that in a war <laughs> it would be very impractical uh, location. So it fits with the idea that Rahab had a house in the walls in an area where prostitutes would be, exactly like the Bible describes. So the walls, the mounds, the, the wall mounds all around the city are there. The layer of burnt ash from the fire is there. And Rahab's house. Not only that, but the Bible says that before they invaded Jericho, it was right after the time when the inhabitants of Jericho had, had reaped their harvest. So they had all their harvest food to, out, to, in their minds, outlast the siege. And they have found in Jericho, you can see pictures of them if you look at the article that I, um, or maybe, and in other articles, but they show actual pictures, pictures of the grain jars filled as if they had just reaped their harvest. Every single detail the Bible describes about Jericho that can be verified has been verified. And it has all come back to support the biblical account. So, just like with the flood, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Garden of Eden, everything the Bible describes can be verified to a reasonable extent necessary for us to have faith. And that's why people of old, like the ones named here, acted the way they did because they had Jah with them and he was leading them at this point uh, through to the promised land, but dealing with kingdoms that had been established in a world in rebellion against Jah and under the influence of wicked spirit sons of Jah, who were doing things that in no way honored Jah. So it is Jah's right to destroy those kingdoms. It's his right to destroy any kingdom he wants, today, tomorrow, in the past. They're only here because Jah allows them to exist and continue to offend him so he can judge them based on what they do. So Rahab, as you can see, even though she was a prostitute, you know, we, and we know that Jesus also associated with them, but it doesn't mean he sanctioned those practices. It's just he knew everybody did something wrong. Some people just admitted it and others didn't. So he stuck with those who are at least more aware of their sin than those who were self-righteous and arrogant about it. And so because Rahab, in spite of her, her vocation and morality, she was saved. See, it didn't matter. The morality, the vocation, we're all sinners. And while it's not a good thing that she gives her body away to these people in these ways, when she should be supporting a man and helping raise a family, nonetheless, in this world, things don't always work out like that. So the fact that she was not able to do those things that as a woman she was designed to do, even so in her profession in this world, she was able to help Jah's people. And as a result, regardless of her profession, she was saved. And she's remembered in the Bible, in this account, among all of these people of faith. Rahab the prostitute is right there. So never think you cannot be used or the job cannot use someone because of what they do or you do. We're all sinners. Look at David. He sent a man to the front lines so he would die and he could have his wife. Okay, we make mistakes. We are sinful people. That doesn't mean, though, that we can never do good or that just because we do something bad that we feel great about it. Right? We get punished. We feel bad. There's, there's, David had to suffer because of that sin. It's for Jah to decide those things. When people decide it, they're just deciding for themselves, right? What did Jesus say? Whatever judgment you give, that's what you're getting. So if you notice now, let's jump down to verse 34 where it says, they were made strong because of weakness. It's just like what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 10, where he says, when I am weak, then I am powerful. Because when we're weak, we don't rely on ourselves. When we're weak, we trust in Jah. Then his power comes to us and we become strong because we're not relying on ourselves. That's why we can get through things people can't think we would be able to get through. They don't see the power in our weakness. They don't understand the ways of Jah and what he's looking for. He's waiting for that moment when you realize it's time to trust in him. Then he takes over and all these people who are watching you weak and they think you can't deal with it. Boom! Jaws there right with you 
and they have no idea what happened. They're confused and totally lost, and now you're empowered to do Jah's will. And they can change too if they want, but never feel that Jah will leave you, especially when you're weak. That is the best opportunity for you to gain power by trusting in Jah, not yourself. All right, let's make another point here. Final point, verse 35. He talks about how some received their dead out of a resurrection, but others experienced torture instead of the opportunity for a release. Why? So they might experience a better resurrection. Okay, now this is very important. See, Jah ja is involved in everything, and he sees what's going on with everyone. He knows what he wants you to do. He knows what he wants that person to do. Whether we make the choices necessary for him to use us in those ways, we find out. But there are other people who choose to do things against Jah's will and attack his own people. So you might think, well, why does Jah let it happen? These are his servants, people like Isaiah and others who were killed. The reason he lets it happen, in addition to the fact that we all make we all sin, so we have to die. But why, why, does some, why do some of Jah's servants experience such painful death? Even Jesus, right? He experienced torture. Why? Because two reasons. One, Jah is judging everybody involved in that act. We are being judged because we make mistakes and we sin. The people who are doing the judging themselves and overcompensating because of their imperfection, uh, you know, torturing a person and hurting them excessively like Jah doesn't do, when Jah lets that happen, there's two things occurring. One, he's preparing to reward you. What you endure is all going into what he's going to give you. So the more you endure, the more you're going to receive because you've shown yourself worthy and capable of handling it. Not everybody can handle everything the same way. So do you think all the angels are exactly the same? Well, even Gabriel said in, in Daniel that no one stood with him but Michael. So they couldn't all be the same, right? Some can stand and some can't. And, but the ones who can't, that doesn't make them bad angels. They just aren't involved, probably. I don't know the full metaphysics in that way, but what, they, what is described tells us some don't get involved. Some do get involved. Some can help. Others can't help, just like with humans. So to the extent that the humans or angels are involved with things, Jah's watching everything. So if you have to endure suffering and torture like his son did, well, look at what he did to his son. He resurrected him to his right hand and gave him all authority and power. What does Jesus say he's going to give those who follow him in that way? All authority and power over the nations. So this is not a small thing. This is a big deal to be able to rule and to govern and to judge in the coming world with Jesus and Jah. That's a huge deal. But because of the experiences you go through, we can show ourselves worthy. And being humans, we understand, of course, the type of world we live in, like Jesus now having come to be like us. So we qualify in that sense and we can obtain a better resurrection. A better resurrection. It's better to be resurrected to the right hand of God than just taken away like he took Enoch, right? We don't know that he doesn't say Enoch was taken to the right hand of God, even though he was taken by God and was approved. Well, Jesus was resurrected to the right hand with all authority and power and given the name above every name so that all glory would go to the Father. That's beyond anything anyone has been given to this point. So he received a better resurrection because of what he went through. The torture, the humiliation, the suffering, and the standing up for Jah's name when nobody else would. That's what I want you to do. When nobody else will do it, do it. Where you don't think you can, when you think you're too weak, that's when you're the most powerful if you trust in Jah. Look, remember what Jesus said. Why have you forsaken me? Is that not weakness? Was he not in a weak moment there? But then what did he do? He trusted in Jah and he gave him his spirit. So 
it can be very difficult for us at times to have to go through these things. But remember, Jesus had the right body. God gave him the body so when he would deal with that difficult condition and wonder why he was being forsaken, why he had to go through this death and torture, he would have the right body and he already had the right spirit and now he just had to endure. And that's why Jesus tells us the one who conquers and observes his deeds down to the end will be given the morning star, be able to eat from the tree of life, will be given authority over nations, and will sit down with Jesus on his throne, the same as he sat down with his father on his throne. Revelation chapter 3, verse 5 and 21 and elsewhere. So these are the, the teachings that are given to us to provide hope and encouragement for when things become difficult. And if we have to experience tortures or difficulties, those are just temporary. They're difficult, of course. Who, who would want that? But remember what Jesus said, be not fearful of the ones who can kill the body. You see, they're killing themselves by doing that to you. Everything they're doing to other people, they're just lining themselves up to be next. And they don't even realize it. They don't think that could happen. Yet look at how it has happened to every single person who's lived before. And yet they don't think it's going to happen to them. <laughs> how could it not happen? That's all that ever happens. Judgment and death. And you think you can go and hurt and torture people in life for your own selfish pleasure and not get what's coming? They're fooling themselves. They're deceiving themselves just so they can get by the moment of their sin, not thinking anything will happen to them. This is why they're called the stupid ones. They cannot see that what has happened to every single person who's ever lived is going to happen to them. Somehow they think they just are immune, I guess. They can get away with all this crime, murder, torture, hurting other people, and they're just going to get a free pass right through life. Death will be no problem for them, right? Wrong. Death is going to be the biggest problem they've ever known if they don't turn around and stop hurting other people. There's people like this. They actually think they're going to get away with all this. How are you going to get away with all of that horrible treatment to other people? When you can't even get away with it with humans most of the time. You think you're going to get away with it from Jah, the one who made you to not hurt other people and torture them? All you're doing is giving the people you torture a better future. And you're destroying whatever future you have left. So that's a, a lot of good information here. Don't worry about people who just continue to hurt and harm other people without any thought or care of what they're, what they're, what, what's coming to them. They're going to get it. And there's nothing anyone can do to help them. They either see it or they don't. We can all see and read the same things. Some of us just see it and some don't. Some of us believe it and some don't. We're all going to the same place. So I'm pretty sure we're all going to find out in the same way. Now, it doesn't mean that the result will be the same, but we're all going to go through the same process. So it's the people who don't think they're going to go through that that are in the worst condition possible. Because once it happens to them, they're not going to know what to do. And it's going to be very difficult for them, beyond even the suffering that those who follow Jesus and Jah have to endure, because we know why it's happening. Whereas when they fall into the hands of a living God, they're going to know but they're not going to be able to have any hope of getting out of it. So don't fall into that trap. Even if you die or are tortured, you have hope. You have faith. They don't. They can, but many just choose not to have it so they can keep lying to themselves about the things they're doing that hurt other people. It makes them feel better. Until the time when Josh says, you were wrong. Okay, so try not to be one of those who has that conversation with Jah. You want a better conversation. You want Jah to be able to come to you and show you your life and all the things you did and you not worry about the next scene he's going to show you. We're going to see some things we didn't like depending on how we're judged. But try to make the scenes that are coming next the best ones. Do the best you can in this theater of the world to show Jah that you're sorry for the things that you do wrong 
that you want to try to help people to do better. We have a long history of faithful people from prostitutes to kings to judges. We have a lot of people in our family, our spiritual family of Jah worshipers. And if you ever forget or if you feel alone, just look back at all the things they had to go through. That's why those records are prepared for us, as well as to help us to see the things that happened before and why, so that we know what's coming and why. All right, I appreciate all that. Sometimes, you know, um, you know, we, we get some good text and we can talk about a lot of different things. And I, I'm looking at some of the comments here. So, yes, people have to give their life. We're all going to die unless Jod takes us away like Enoch or we survive to the point where Christ gathers up the living with the trumpet of God as he raises the dead. But you don't, you should just think about each day. Those, that will happen to us or not. Or we will have to pass away and then be brought back. We weren't here before, so... You know, don't dwell on the things you cannot change. Try to focus on the things that you can change or accept the system you're a part of. Recognize there's a limitation to your life, but that you serve the source of life so that you put yourself in the best possible position for life in the future. Either way, the life that we live now can be much better if we treat people the way we want to be treated, follow the ways of Jesus, and praise Jah. And that's what we do. So I thank you all for joining me. And um, I look forward to tomorrow's day text. We'll keep working our way through the book of Hebrews. We have Saturday's CW Jaw Talk number 11 on Ancient Aliens. So be sure to join me for that. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow for another day text.